Welcome to the show. Thanks for joining me. Our first headline is a historic peace deal between Israel and Morocco that is not getting much attention. And I'd like to share this with you. The U.S. has moved to recognize Rabat's claim over Western Sahara, paving the way for the fourth in the series of Trump brokered normalization accords. This will include liaison offices and direct flights from Morocco to Israel and vice versa. This article was written by Jacob Magid and the Associated Press. Trump said Israel and Morocco would restore diplomatic and other relations, including the immediate opening of liaison offices in Rabat and Tel Aviv and the eventual opening of embassies. U.S. officials said it would also include joint overflight rights for airlines. So you have it here, um, a great economic boon for both countries. Bibi Netanyahu is quoted here as saying, quote, this will be a very warm peace. On this Hanukkah, the light of peace has never shone brighter than today in the Middle East. And that's the end of the quote by Netanyahu. Uh, at where he spoke at a Hanukkah candle lighting ceremony at the Western Wall. He went on to say the relationship of the people of both countries, quote, has long been characterized by sympathy, respect, fondness, and love, end quote. He also praised King Muhammad's historic decision to make peace. So I have a few uh, thoughts on this to share with you. The uh, Associated Press and other media outlets fell short on this issue after the initial reporting. Instead of giving uh, President Trump credit, uh, bringing people from this these uh, peace accord deals uh, and talking to them, they instead went back to their usual bashing of the president. These are the same people who praised the Iran nuclear deal when Obama got it done and brought all of uh, his cronies on TV and paraded them around. They fall silent on peace in the Middle East. These very same people that will have you believe Iran is a friend of the United States or wants to be. These are the same people who are silent about no more new wars from the United States and the Middle East since President Trump took over back in January of 2016. This peace deal happens because of three things. President Trump's leadership, Israel Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu's willingness to put people above politics, and third, a willingness from King Muhammad of Morocco to negotiate peace. Our second headline is from Bloomberg written by Anthony Capaccio and Nick Wadhams, the U.S. proposes one billion arms sale to Morocco after the Israel peace deal. The article goes on to say, the U.S. has proposed selling as much as one billion in weapons, including Reaper drones, to Morocco just a day after President Donald Trump paved the way for a diplomatic deal with Israel by recognizing the country's claims of sovereignty over Western Sahara. So I have a few thoughts to share with you on this. You see everything coming together when it comes to a greater defense against an aggressive Iran. Iran's government, furious at Israel, claiming they killed Iranian top scientists. News today is circulating all around the U.S. that the United States has formally announced Iran killed an FBI agent of America. This is not a game. This is unraveling in a disturbing way. And the free and fair press is running amok. 
running amok against our president, running amok against our democracy, running amok against constitutional values, religious liberty, your second amendment right, your fourth amendment right. They're doing all of these things. While we lose the technology race, they can't even cover the diplomatic race, the race to be first in peace. Our next headline comes from Al Jazeera News. Israel and the Kingdom of Bhutan have established diplomatic relations. Israel and Bhutan announced the establishment of full diplomatic relations between the two countries. The agreement came on Saturday and it will open the path to greater cooperation and further strengthening relations between Israel and the South Asian Kingdom, according to a joint statement. Israel's new relations with the relatively isolated Himalayan nation did not appear to be related to its budding ties under U.S.-sponsored accords with Arab and Muslim countries in the Middle East and Africa. Now, my thought on that uh, part of the article is I disagree. I think it absolutely uh, has to do with those budding uh, ties between Israel the United Arab Emirates, now Morocco. I mean, it's really picking up steam, and they definitely have caught wind of that here. The agreement follows several years of secret conflicts between Israel and Bhutan. With the aim of establishing relations, Israel's Ministry of Foreign Affairs said in a statement, so the foreign affairs, just to step aside from this for a second, the foreign affairs ministry is always a very flamboyant position to me. It stands out. So the article goes on to say uh, in a quote by Israel's foreign minister, Gabi Ashkenazi, and I'll do the best I can with these names. Israel's circle of recognition is growing and expanding, end quote, and that's what the foreign minister of Israel said. He's quoted as saying, the establishment of relations between Israel and the kingdom of Bhutan will serve as another milestone in deepening Israel's ties in Asia. Now, this is very important. This is very important uh, to me. It should be important to you uh, that Israel is protected. And if you read your Bible and you're a student of your Bible, you would understand that. So Israel um, making these peace agreements uh, can be summed up really with what Bibi uh, Netanyahu, Israel prime minister, said. He uh, wrote on Twitter that, in quote, this is the additional fruit of the peace agreements. And that's very powerful. Uh, that's very powerful stuff. Uh, he also added that Israel was in contact with more countries to normalize relations. So I have a few thoughts on uh, this article that I'd like to share with you. What is happening here is a force of peace rolling out across the world. For those that want peace, Israel Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu wants his legacy to be one of lasting peace between nations. A man that's fought his rivals constantly and under constant pressure and scrutiny, even from the Democrat Party here in our own nation. Word travels faster than ever. We then see the kingdom of Bhutan enter peace with Israel. This is very easy to believe they have heard of Israel's four prior peace agreements, peace accords, if you will, and wanted to be part of this wonderful phenomena that's happening across the globe. Better for their economy, national defense, and for the good of their people and the people of Israel. Yet again, the mainstream media tycoons are falling short of talking about Israel's growth like they do with America's growth, which is not surprising, but endlessly tiresome and worrisome. Our last report of the day comes from a wonderful website, uh, ArsTechnica.com, written by Scott K. Johnson, who is a very talented writer. And this report is uh, titled, the headline, New Analysis, Extreme Flows in 
the United States streams are rising. The article goes on to say many efforts have found mixed trends between streams when analyzing records of peak annual flows where records tend to go back farther than constant measurements. Attempts to look for regional patterns have largely relied on grouping by arbitrary boxes or political boundaries which only have a limited connection to the landscape. The new research included about 540 stream flow stations in the United States and Canada, all from locations that have little human impact and that have at least 60 years of data. To put the stations in groups, they used their location, elevation, and seasonal flow pattern. The sites clustered into 15 different groups, 12 of which included a large enough number of stations to attempt a trend analysis with. These groups were analyzed for changes in the frequency of extreme high and low stream flow on an annual and seasonal scale. The researchers calculated this for events of different rarities, 50% chance per year, 20% chance per year, etc., and from different starting years, but the results were generally consistent. So this is very groundbreaking news, stepping aside from the article here. This is riveting stuff, hard-hitting news that you're not getting, you're not hearing about this report. We'll go on to talk about that, but let me finish up uh, with this and the article that will help make this a little more clear. The snow melt regions that include the Pacific Northwest, the Rockies that go from the U.S. into Canada in the Midwest, the Appalachians in Northeast. In these places, there is either a trend toward higher peak flows in spring or higher peak flows in winter. That is consistent with the trend toward earlier snowpack depletion with warming spring temperatures. Okay, so now you're seeing the snowmelt regions being adversely affected by this. And the research uh, leads us to believe that with a great uh, data size and great data sampling. So the article, just to finish up, separately high stream flows in summer and fall have become more common in the northeast. Midwest and Appalachian regions matching precipitation trends. So you have this report, groundbreaking stuff, and the media uh, is in the mouse hole in the wall. So the first question I'll share with you, and I'd appreciate your comments below as always about anything on the show, is this revelations coming to life? And is this, you know, talking about Bible uh, prophecy? We have here a specific example of the earth changing right before our eyes in a rapid fashion. You cannot in good faith dismiss this research. Where are the climate activists and scientists? Are they too busy hassling our president on Twitter or social media and all over the press to even bring this research up? Or are they too busy pimping the COVID vaccine to you, your friends and family? What about CNN and MSNBC? Where are they at? They show you Greta Thornberry, Wild Thornberries, or whoever the heck, but can't give us a real story. It's frustrating. It's frightening. Our press doesn't even report science, but they act like science experts. They would rather bring in the philosophers, the TED Talks, and the risk assessors to beat the dead horse of democracy over and over down your throat until it tastes good or somewhat tasty. Thank you for listening to the show. As always, I appreciate your comments below. Check out the podcast, Unfiltered Podcast, on anchor.fm slash Preston Super Show or wherever you listen to podcasts. I even put the exclusive episode uh, with no ads or anything on SoundCloud. Uh, but the main thing I want you to take away from today is some reflection time to think about what we talked about here. Form your own opinions, your own thoughts, and your own beliefs because that's what really matters. And as always, I will have another grand video for you soon. Stay tuned. Like and subscribe. Tell all your friends. Uh, you know, maybe not have a house party. COVID's going on. But, you know, you have a party yourself. There you go. So everybody have a good night. Uh, have a good day. And just like the hands of time, I'm turning it over to you.